I have my Doctor Who dressing gown on. It's a present for my father for Christmas. Um, it's a bit bland, this, isn't it? Um, it's a bit confusing, I would say. Well, it's a right hodgepodge. A hodgepodge is a good description. It's a hodgepodge because... They don't seem like a team at all, do they? So, hold on. Let's talk about that in a minute, because I think there's something interesting there. But let's just talk about the overall story, which is bland because the sets are dull and... Monarch's interesting, but this crackpot scheme he've got about travelling back in time and then meeting himself as God is absolute bobbins, especially when you throw that into contrast with what appears to be trying to be some sort of slow burn, kind of gritty sort of takedown of this, this tyrant. But it's all set in like four rooms and it's all a bit weird. I'm... I'm I know this is going to turn around, but the Doctor's rubbish. Doctor, yeah. Now, I know yeah, this... it's a bit nothing, isn't it? Now, I know this is... This is I think we're going to look back, because obviously, again, I repeat what I've said a billion times. We're watching this to, to work out the story of the Doctor, what's his life journey. And we have gone from the most bombastic, forceful you know, invulnerable in some ways, Doctor, to this guy who's like, are there any weapons on the ship? You know, can we expect some help from somewhere else? When the chuff did the fourth Doctor ever need that? He'd be like, I know, I've got an idea. I'll go and talk his socks off and then come up with something. And here's the fifth Doctor pottering about getting a guided tour, swinging, you know, beach balls around. It's, a, it's such a, a massive shift, you know, from seven episodes ago, where we had somebody who was making deals with one of the most evil people in the galaxy and climbing about on Jodrell Bank, to this guy who's just sort of ambling about. It, it's it's a, a heck of a change. And it could work. Right, so let's get this. So that's the way things are. Here's what could make it work. What could make it work is if the personal drama amongst the TARDIS crew was the focus here. If this was just an opportunity to showcase the individual that... Now, I'm going to use this perhaps for the first time, but this, uh, maybe you don't know this, has been referred to sort of the soap opera era of Doctor Who because we've got this cast of characters and it's not all happiness and light, is it? And there's tensions and disagreements. And that could be what makes this work. It could be what, you know, that the individual... We could... I've made reference to the first Doctor. Before you think back to the arguments that Chesterton, Ian Chesterton and, and William Hartnell had, uh, you know, the, the sort of growing pains of Susan, Barbara trying to keep on top of it. You think back to the Aztecs. The Aztecs is basically a, um, an opportunity to have that, you know, you can't change history one single line played out over four episodes. But it doesn't work. <laughs> And it doesn't work for a number of reasons. First of all, I like Nyssa, but it, she's not popping as a character, is she? Really, really, honestly, truthfully. I think she's a decent companion, but in terms of that sort of human drama, we've had reference to the Master and stuff, but... Yeah. And then, you know, should he ever watch this, and he's not going to, so I don't know why I worry about it, but honestly, you can't tell whether Adric's play, pretending to be... Like, he's, he's played this game before. I assumed he was... You see, I thought he was playing him. Yeah. I thought he was... He was. Oh, yeah, I'll play along with Monarch because I'm canny enough to work out that this is Bobbins. But no, he actually meant it this time. Yeah. And he gets suckered in with this quite obvious Bobbins. So I can't buy into him as, a, as a, this mathematical genius because... He's a knob. He just comes across as being an absolute idiot. And... With the best one in the world, I don't know what Matthew Waterhouse is trying to do with this character. Because I get I understand through the terms of the plot what function Adric is serving there, but it's nonsense. And then when Nissa turns around and goes, shut up, and then Monarch says, you know, be nice. And it's like, whoa, is that the one bit of spunkiness from Nissa? Then you get Tegan. Now, I am completely willing to buy into this whole. Tegan is a normal, not average, hate that sort of terminology, but she's a person, like you and I are a person. I assume you're a person, I don't know who you are. You could be AI. I've been using Google Bard a lot recently, it's hilarious. But 
this is a completely natural reaction for Tegan to have. A completely natural reaction. But the problem is, where are you going, Dusty? I'm talking to people here. Right. The problem is that she's coming across as just whingy, complainy, and that's not the Tegan we met first of all, who was brave and bolshy and did what had to be done. And her adversary, for want of a better word, is the doctor who just basically says, shut up, stay here. You know, just stay where you are, you're safe here. That's not, I mean, the doctor does do things like that. But how am I supposed to take Tegan seriously when my, my hero is basically saying, just shut up, do as you're told. Especially when he's not actually doing anything at all. It's such a weird dynamic in this story. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't want to be too down about this. I want to get this, you know, new ear of Doctor off to a flying start. But my gosh, Four to Doomsday is just, it's proven a bit of a slog here. And I can see there's a story, there's a, there's a Doctor Who, that's a key thing, there's a Doctor Who story tucked away in here of this giant frog, you know, going, you know, who's absolutely nuts wanting to travel back in time and replacing people with robots already this sounds like a flipping you know bbc novel I go back and meet myself as god if yeah I, I want yeah going back and meeting myself as god that's a cliffhanger surely <laughs> that's not just a flipping throwaway <laughs> oh he's got this little plan he's going to go back in time he's increased the speed of the ship and he's going to meet himself as god and then the cliffhanger is Tom Baker going, well, well he's fucking nuts then. Brilliant. Weird. What weird, what weird story. Oh, yeah. What a weird story. It is a freaking weird story. And that's just hit... There's division as well between everyone. Like, Tegan's gone off in one place. Yeah. Adric's believing one thing. Yeah. And this is obviously about to save the day. Joe, you know I miss K9. He'd sort all this out. Canine would just be on it. Canine would be absolutely on this. Romana? Romana would cut through this like a knife through butter. This is just weird. It's a really weird... It's a really weird Doctor Who story. I love the idea of Tom. Oh, I see, I feel so... You were sick of Tom as well. Yeah, but can you imagine, Tom? Imagine Graham Williams... Oh, God, here I'm a hawk after Graham Williams. This is shocking. But Graham Williams the era Tom meeting a giant frog who wants to travel back in time to meet himself as God. That's a Doctor Who story I want to see. Maybe he'll get better. Weird. Oh, he will. He will. He, he absolutely is going to get better. This isn't... I don't know what era of Doctor Who this sure is going fit into. Like, it could be... It could be a first Doctor story. This division between the companions, that could work as a first Doctor story. It could be a fourth Doctor... It could be a Douglas Adams, script-edited, ridiculous Doctor Who story. But it's neither betwixt nor between here, and it's not working. Right, I'm going to stop talking after eight and a half minutes, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.